web page. It looks like it has an active web page. So I'll go to, let's do it in real time first. Okay, the web browser. I'll try by using the IP address. All right, so we have connectivity with the web, not with the web service, right? Because we have the web page presented, right? Okay. Why did I put put in the IP address? Now, the question that, that I'm asking you does not relate to Chapter Nine; it relates to a previous chapter. Why did I have to type the IP address? Yeah. Because we don't have a DNS. Okay. All right, I'm going back to simulation mode. Okay. Now we'll try a different uh, PC. All right, PC9. Now click go. Let's go back to simulator. I'm going to click. Uh, Capture forward. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, we didn't see the traffic in the simulator because I didn't tag this particular traffic in the edit filters. Okay, so we'll try that again. I'll go to edit filters, and this time we want to trace HG, not HTTPS, but HTTP. All right, so we'll learn a little bit about Packet Tracer. Let's go along here. Okay, let's, let's try a PC8, because PC8 has not had any uh, web connectivity. Okay, I'll click Go. Okay, the request is generated. It's going to the hub and where? everywhere. That's a bummer, right? Because we really need to communicate with this device. Now just imagine that at the same time that PC8 is sending a web request, other devices are sending requests of different type. Could be HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, ARP, um, FTP. Where are those packets going? They're being broadcast, broadcast to all the ports, all the the active ports that are associated with the hub, right? Okay, let's clear. The uh, scenario and let's go ahead and remove the hub. Let's bring in a switch. Get some cables. Okay. Why do we have? Uh, okay, there we go. Just gonna ask why do we have red lights? Let's go to real time mode <coughs> so we can uh, speed up spanning tree protocol process. <coughs> Get all green lights. Okay. 
All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, what I did is I typed the command show MAC address table. Switches keep track of MAC addresses that are associated with ports that are attached to the switch. Okay, that's how switches are able to um, send packets or frames specifically to their ports that are associated with a certain MAC address. Hence, switches do not need to broadcast every frame, as we saw the hub, the hub do, right? Okay. Right now, notice that there are no MAC address to port mappings. So basically, the MAC table is clear at this moment. Yeah. All right. I'm going to send a ping from a PC to PC1. Okay, we need to, to track the ping. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and include ICMP. And we won't look at R. Packet gets to the switch, and the packet is going where? No broadcast, huh? The reply from PC1 is now at the switch, and it's going where? Okay. We go to PC7. Generate some web traffic. Okay, the request is generated. Now at the switch, directly to the server. Okay, back at the switch, PC7. Okay, so we see the benefit of using a switch instead of a hub, right? Okay. Now let's take a look at that uh, mag table. Wow, look at there. The switch has learned, learned a few things. It knows that MAC address 0007 da 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 2E is associated with port 0 slash 7. Hmm, 0 slash 7. Where is 0 slash 7? PC4? No, it's not PC4. There it is. So the web server is attached to 07, right? Yeah, FA stands for Fast Ethernet. Well, let's see the MAC address that's assigned to PC2. Okay, it's 0060. Uh, let's use the inspect tool. MAC address is 0060 and 
it ends at E3B1. Let's go, let's look at the switch MAC table. Notice we don't see that MAC address. Okay. Now, if you could imagine that there's no such thing as the ARP or that um, PC6 already knows the MAC address that's assigned to um, PC2, okay? But the switch does not know where that MAC address is, right? Because looking at the uh, table, we see that the switch doesn't know where that MAC address is, right? So what happened is in this instance, PC6 sends uh, a ping to PC2. Since the switch does not know where that MAC address is, where the destination is, what will the switch do in that instance? But well, let's assume, let's imagine that ARP does not exist. It's going to flood it. It's going to send that frame out every port. It's, a, it's going to be a broadcast, right? However, PC2 is going to respond, right? When PC2 responds, the switch is going to learn its MAC address. So the next time around, whenever a device needs to communicate with uh, PC2, the switch will not have to broadcast. Okay, because and let's let's see that play out. Now we're not going to see the broadcast because. Um, ARP is going to kick in, and let's 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 uh, let's include ARP as one of the uh, protocols we want to trace. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to look at uh, PC6 ARP table. Notice that it's blank. So right now it does not know PC2's MAC address. Okay. But we need to send a ping from PC6 to PC2. But in order for that to happen, somehow PC6 has to get PC2's MAC address. That's where ARP comes in. All right. And IP address is 0 0.2. Okay. All right. Let me reset. Let's reset the simulation. All right. We have an ICMP that's been generated, right? Mm, okay. Wait a minute. All right, we have to use a different PC because PC6 learned a MAC address that's associated with the PC2. Okay, this time we'll use a PC. All right, we'll use a PC3. PC2. All right, we see that PC3 ARP cache is blank. Okay. 